Damien was in my face the entire time. So I think that he could kind of tell how I felt about a take. And then like, if, if it was like, you know, the second or third take of the day, I would be like, that was terrible, wasn't it? And he would be like, it wasn't your best. And Sophie would come in and be like, but it's okay, you were beautiful, it was great. And, and so then like, <laughs> Damien would be like, mm, this is where you went wrong. And I'd be like, you know what, you're right. Um, so I think not, cause I a hundred percent trust Sophie. I mean, she's like the best collaborator, obviously. But I think it was nice to just have someone who like wasn't afraid to hurt my feelings. <laughs> Welcome to the SAG After Foundations Conversations at Home program. I'm Perry Nemiroff from Collider. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our panelists today. The writer and director of Cherry, Sophie Gallibert. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Congratulations. And Thank we you. also have the star of Cherry with us, Alex Truitt. Thanks for having us. All right. So I have to start with you, Sophie, because this is a first feature here, which is just something else. So two-parter on that. What was it that made you wake up one day and say to yourself, like, now is the time to make my first feature? And then also, why specifically make that leap with this particular story? Mm -hmm. So it's funny because uh, I started writing the script five years ago and we were like trying to find to finance it and we rewrite it. And at some point, actually COVID hit. And we had a script ready. And I was like, oh no, maybe we're, we're gonna have to wait a year or two, or I mean, at this time we didn't know. And it was like, you know what? I don't care. I'm gonna make my movie, whatever happened. And so we just, I mean, I think the pandemic forced me to realize that there's always good reason not to do things. And I was, you know what? We're gonna start prepping, we're gonna start working and hopefully will we be able to shoot in the next month? Um, so I don't know, I think that was maybe the, the click. Um, but for the story, I think it's a story that come like from a long time ago. Uh, it's based on my own experience. I had an abortion I was on, when I was uh, 25 and I wanted to talk about that um, because actually I didn't talk about that too much. And I was like, why is it so taboo? Why is it so hard as a woman to, to share that with other women? And I remember when I was ba still back in France, uh, I had another script. I was the same subject. And when I moved to the US six years ago, I was thinking about this first feature that I was, you know, craving to do. And I was like, I think I really need to, to talk about that. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a story that, you know, thing need, needed to be uh, told, uh, especially today. I cannot believe how the world changed in five years. Um, so yeah. Oh, so many follow-ups. First, first, I do want to know when you're covering this particular type of scenario and subject matter, is there anything that other movies that have tackled it have yet to tap into that became a priority to make sure that your viewers knew about and experienced through Cherry's experience? So actually, I watch I watch a lot of movies about you know, abortion or choice, and I really enjoy all of them, but sometimes I find them too dark. And I was, I think I want to share my story in a more like lightful way, more colorful, even though it's a very sensitive topic. I think I wanted to just give more hope and a point of view that is, um, what is it to be in someone's shoes who like someone like Cherry who discovered that she's pregnant and it's not planned. Uh, whether having a movie only focusing on getting an abortion, because this movie is not actually abortion, it's more about choice. What is it to make this kind of choice that's going to shape your entire life? Um, yeah, I don't know if that answer your question, but uh... absolutely, and it it does it definitely makes it stand out from uh, from the pack, and it does when you were describing the the idea of it feeling a bit hopeful. I immediately went to where the movie ends, and I think you chose kind of like a pitch perfect place to stop her story to give people that feeling to leave the movie with, which is something special. Yeah, thank you. So let's get into casting and make it really awkward because Sophie, I'm going to ask you to talk about Alex a little bit. So this movie just doesn't work unless you find the perfect cherry. And I'm a big believer that you did. So can you walk us through how you conducted that search? And then also, what was it about Alex's tape that set her apart from all the other takes on the character you saw during the audition process? Yeah. So actually, the, the casting process was very long. I kind of started by myself. I remember I spent an entire month before in, in uh, 2019, just like looking at like, thousand of like profile and then I get I got casting director in board just Jasmine Gutierrez and she helped kind of um kind of narrow like we, we repost what I did post 
Uh, and I think because I had this casting director with me, it helped to have more profile. And I remember Alex admitted uh, through your manager or your agent. I don't know. And I think I, re- I was looking for like Cherry Spark. I was really looking for something that it's hard to describe. I think it's just an energy. Um, and so we cast so many people. I mean, and again, I'm so grateful to all the people who like audition for this role because I know how much time it takes. It's insane. And um, this movie here was shot in long shot. So I remember we asked people to do tape, like self tape on 15 to 20 pages, which is a lot of work. But we wanted to make sure that the actress will be able to like hold on, on you know, be able to go through so much, um, you know, uh, text. And I remember when we received Alex uh, self tape, I was like, oh my God. And Alex was in Atlanta. So we did a call back on Zoom. And it was weird because it's you don't have the person in front of you, but I felt it. I was like, I think I found it. I think I found my little pearl in the ocean. <laughs> I've been looking for like months. And um, we had to decide because Alex was not in LA. And I was like, no, at every choice, it's a, you know, you have to jump in the pool. So we're like, you know, I think this is her. And when we met in person, I was like, oh my God, yeah, she's perfect. I don't know. I think you you have this very bright, colorful energy while being a very kind of deep, beautiful human. Like you have something very grounded. Uh, and at the same time, you have a very kind of um, sparkly, you know, personality. So I think this is what I was looking for. <laughs> So weird. Yeah. And by the way, Alex, it's such so much fun to work with. She's um, I don't know, it was because you know, you look for the best person for the character, but you also want to make sure that the human behind is gonna be on board. And Alex was on it for everything from shooting all the way to today. She has been such a you know, like my cheerleader. And uh yeah, thank you for being on board and thank you for being with me like all this time. Thank you, Alex. We love you. <laughs> love you. That's so incredibly true. I feel like we don't talk about that nearly enough, the importance of picking collaborators who can get their jobs done well, but also who are just, I don't know, good good human beings and would be pleasant collaborators to, to go on this kind of ride with because it doesn't just end with production. It's something that lives on forever and you yeah. want to have the right partners. Absolutely. So true. I, I want to make sure I heard that right. Alex, when you auditioned for this and made your tape, you were given 15 to 20 pages. Yeah. <laughs> what was your reaction um, when we, you got that? Something like, oh God, another one. Um, just because I think that a lot, I think as soon as everything was like, okay, we're a hundred percent self tape. I started getting just like massive amounts of pages which was, you know, it's fine. We're, we're learning, growing, trying new, new things. And, um, it was a, it was a tough challenge, but I mean, Sophie's right because we did actually shoot our whole movie in seven long takes. Um, so, I mean, we were rolling, you know, I think our shortest one was maybe 15 minutes and our longest one was like upwards of 25 minutes, which is a long time to just keep on rolling in a lot of, a lot of, pages and a lot of just everything. So, um, it made sense kind of once I figured out like, you know, what we were rolling with, but it it was tough. And I was still, I was back home with my family. My childhood best friend was my reader and she is, um, I think that she's a first grade teacher. And so she was reading with me as if she were like reading to her small children. So it was like kind of a ridiculous tape, but it was a lot of fun and it worked out really well. Just a broader question. Do you find that when you audition for things virtually and how that's all shifted that you get more pages per audition now? Yeah. I mean, I do personally. I don't know if everyone else. I mean, I think that's the general consensus with my friends too. Um, but I that could just I could just be me. Well, that's so interesting to consider. I mean, I guess yeah. when you're taping, when you're taping from home and you you kind of have the time to do it and you could see more of someone's range at a particular role. More pages is the way to go. I guess. <laughs> More work for you, but it paid More off work. in this case. Yeah, um, it did. I'm curious, what would you say is the biggest difference between how you pictured Cherry when you first booked the role and mm. who she turned out to be the more you got to explore her and kind of live with her during the production process? Oh, that's a great question. I think that uh, when I first read her, I was just so excited because it's so rare that you get to have such a dynamic, interesting, and just like messy girl. Uh, Because so much, so many times I think I'm reading for something that she's, you know, trying so hard to be perfect and she's trying so hard to 
have the world see her this way. And Cherry's not doing any of that. She's just like trying to figure out her own stuff. She's, she's doing her own thing and like chasing some crazy dreams, like roller skating. I didn't even know that that, I didn't know that that world existed. And so just to have all of these kind of outrageous things that she is so focused on and so good at that, that is the priority. It's just, it was fun. And I also, I feel like I also kind of related to that too, in a lot of different ways. I have a million questions about the roller skating, but before, before we get there, so you kind of just explained she's, she's not the type of person who is just trying to be perfect and kind of has that through line to her. So it does result in her, you know, making some knee jerk and sometimes some poor decisions in terms of what she says to certain people. So with that in mind, was there any particular scene or choice she makes throughout the movie that you found you needed to like sit with and think about and maybe talk through with Sophie the most to just fully wrap your head around her motivation honestly I think that we we went back and forth about so there's the scene where I go to the clinic and uh we went back and forth for a really long time if we were going to listen to the heartbeat or not because that is such you know it's a really hot button topic and heart the heartbeat itself is like just such a political nightmare um we went back and forth because we weren't we weren't sure if that was then going to make our movie too political or anything. And ultimately we just decided we didn't care. I think, right. Sophie, we were, like that was what you wanted. And we were like, yeah, we're going to go for it and we're going to shoot it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And um, I do think it added a lot to it, but we spent a lot of time kind of talking about that, what that might be. Um, and Sophie was also like so brave and open with me to share like how she felt about a lot of things and things that she went through. So I don't know. I mean, would you, would you agree? Would you say that's kind of the most? The yeah. Thing I, I know that was for me, but I think that I thought about that the most as well. Yeah. I think even in the script, we had this scene and we, we like put it away and then we put it back in the script. And I think, yeah, you need to take some risk at some point and say like, you know, that was my first idea. I should yeah. stick on that. And again, if it doesn't work when you're like in the editing room, we can always cut it out. And I'm so gl- uh, glad that we kept it and we shot it. Cause I think it's a beautiful scene and a lot of, uh, I remember a lot of people in the audience um, talk about this scene. Mm-hmm. I think the, the scene with the father was also a scene that was um, difficult because you are like talking and the father is so silent. So I think that was a very challenging scene to shoot. And we only have one day to shoot this entire scene with the car. And so, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that, but I think this scene really turned out very well but I think it's the most challenging because there's so little happening, but so much at the same time. <laughs> I also, I think Sophie doesn't want to say it, but I'll say it. I called her crying the night we wrapped that day because I thought that I did so poorly. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what it, I just, I felt like I wasn't delivering. And it's so crazy because I think so often that's the scene where that people bring up and they're like, I was actually really moved by that. Or that was my favorite scene. And I'm like, Really, mean they had a full mental breakdown in the middle of shooting, calling the director. Yeah, no, you oh, did great. It's so, yeah. it's so good. Yeah, but I mean, it was a, it was an intense shooting too. I think you know we're like in the middle of a heat wave. We we had little yeah. time to shoot. It was very kind of we were like under pressure, and uh, I think all the emotion kind of like blend at some point. So I think for all the actors and actresses out there, I mean, if you have a thing that you maybe fell, maybe, maybe you didn't fail. Maybe you succeed something that is really hard to achieve. I don't know. Trust me. They're sure. literally hot. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Well, I'm going to I'm going to make you even more embarrassed because I want to stick with that idea because it can be a really useful tool for a lot to hear your perspective on, you know, what happens when you go home and you're not happy with with what you did, but you have to forge forward. So having had that experience is, is there like a tool you've come up with where on future projects, if you go home feeling that way, you can kind of reach for that tool and give yourself, you know, the added self-confidence in order to feel good about that, but also be able to wake up and tackle what you have the next day full force. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really just about really nailing down your support system. Um, because I don't, I don't think I've always been one of those people who's like, I'll, I'll figure it out on my own. I'll do it by myself. I'll just do this, this, and this. And then actually while I, so I met my now husband like a month before we started shooting. And so I think that really just kind of changed my perspective on like, Oh, it is nice to have people like love and support you. So I think it's just, if I've had a really just awful day or I just feel like I didn't get it and I'm just like 
overall disappointed in myself. I think I just have to kind of like sit with that. I set a timer and I can be disappointed in myself for like 15 minutes and just be so mad and so upset. But after the 15 minutes, I just have to let it go. Um, I'll probably have like an emergency ice cream and then I have to go like call my people. (laughs) Um, And um, that is like kind of, I think that's the, I'm still, it's something I'm definitely still working on. But at this moment in time, that is the routine. And, you know, maybe, maybe that will get to be five minutes where I'm only upset and disappointed, but you know, we're making strides. We're trying to get better. Emergency ice cream in 15 (laughs) minutes. There's going to be a a time in the very near future where I take that advice and I run with it. (laughs) Sophie, I'll turn that idea towards you a little. Was there any particular scene where even when you got to the edit, you're like, oh, like, I don't know if this is working quite right. And then when you screened it for an audience, whether it was your Tribeca premiere audience or even Mm. a test screening, people were responding to something that was more powerful than you ever even realized. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because you write something from your head, it becomes paper, and then you shoot it, and then you edit it, but you're like so much into it that you don't have distance. And I think at some point you have to trust your collaborator and the people like surrounding you. Um, and when we decided actually to cut, to try, because we had a feeling was we had a feeling that the movie was maybe could uh, could help a little more rhythm, and and we realized that okay, you know, let's try it. So I think for me, it's the process is more. Let always let's try things. There is no wrong or right. We can just try. And even on the shooting, I remember the first scene, uh, you know, the first day we shot was really hard. But I think I, I told you, you know what? It's okay if you jump a line, if something happened, it doesn't have to be perfect. But just let's try. Let's make it like a playground. I think making movies like, you know, it's really hard. It's also very fun, and but you need to try and not take things too seriously, while actually it's a lot of pressure, it's this really contradictory feeling where it has to it has to stay a fun. I think like actors, I mean, I don't think I work well with like too much stress and pressure. So I think trying to create this safe place for the actor to explore and try, and it's okay, there's no, yeah, there's no right or wrong. And I think I really, because I'm French also, so the, sometimes the dialogues I wrote, didn't we really work, you know? So I was like, if you want to twist a, a, a sentence, if you want to add something, please do it. I'm not, you know, it's not perfect. So let me let make it be- better in a way. And I was so glad that, you know, my, my cast and all the uh, character really like kind of embrace that and just elevate, you know, their own character and, and, and the movie. I yeah, I think, it. yeah, I think it's important to keep this sense of freedom. Uh, I mean, every director are different, but I think for me, it's not like, it's okay if you know when sentences, I mean, I'm not like at the comma. I mean, I don't know if you say that in English, but, and I think I actually did an amazing job just like diving into that and make you the material yours. And I think you really, really help in making this huge, huge difference where you just become cherry in a way. Ooh, thanks. <laughs> That's a good description there. <laughs> um, uh, Turning turning towards Cherry as a character, I, I get a little obsessed with backstory and because I'm really close with my sister and we're two completely different people, I caught myself thinking about this. Did you ever do any backstory work on their dynamic growing up and why they might have grown up into two completely different people now? Yeah, totally. I mean, so my sister is also like one of my favorite people in the world and I'm also eight years older than she is. So, I mean, we're and we like even despite the age difference, we are completely different. Like I've always, like she spent most of her summers growing up in LA with me. And, um, I was always like, come like you, you could be in Hollywood. Like, it'll be so exciting and cool and fun. And since she was 10 years old, she's been like, I want to be a dentist. I need stability. She's in her junior year of college and she is studying to be a dentist. Like, she's just like, we are, we could not be more different. But it is so, I think that that's so much fun because like we love, I mean, you know, with having a sister, it is, you can push, you can push each other's buttons, not like no one else can, but at the end of the day, I mean, I would die for her. She can, we, we can be fighting. And then the next minute, I mean, it, it, it's like, it never happened. My sister's the social worker and I talk about movies all day. It's great. <laughs> Great. Um, I promise we're coming back to the roller skating. I have a million questions about that. I will start with this one. Had you ever roller skated before? And where would you say your skill level was when you first did those first two lessons? I started out 
if you put skates on Bambi. And then um, I ended maybe if I had like picked it up and really stuck with it through high school, I feel like I had never skated. And um, I, I wasn't sure how important that was going to be for you or not, Sophie, but I, so I like, I did my, I did my tapes and then we did our, we did our read together. And then I get this call from my agent and he's like, so, I mean, they really want to book you. However, it's contingent on how you do with these two skating lessons. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> okay, we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. And so I met with Morgan Weske of the LA roller girls, all of them like incredible athletes. So strong. So like the agility is insane. It's like ice skating on roller skates plus gymnastics somehow. And, um, I couldn't stop like you, I'm sure still have that really pathetic video. So if he was like, I really just need to see where you're starting. And I like tried the nice skates didn't fit. And I did this like one lap, like falling over. I couldn't stop. I slammed into the wall and I was like, hope this works for you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and by the grace of God, it did, I guess, Sophie. But, um, yeah, I trained for six weeks actually every day leading up to shooting and then had to skate obviously like a lot while we were shooting, but since we were doing these long takes, I mean, everything had to be like, it's so hard to like, it's hard enough to stop on a mark. I feel like while you're doing like a walk and talk regularly, but then to add skates to that is just like crazy. Um, but our DP was actually also on skates, pulling his own focus going backwards. So there was also a lot of coordination with that. I had to have a lot of rehearsals with Damien Damien Sek was our DP and uh, we would do the rehearsals together to make sure that like the distance was correct and where we were stopping and all of these different things. So there were a lot of really technical aspects that came with the roller skating. And I tell Sophie all the time, this is the hardest movie I will ever do. It's something you leave with a cool skill though. Do you still roller skate? Sophie has my skates. <laughs> Those skates are really cool. I feel like I would so want to cool. learn to roller skate if I owned those skates or ones that look like them. Yes, just by ob sheer obligation of having yeah. them. But <laughs> I did find out over winter that uh, my roller skating skills somewhat translate to ice skating. So I think there's hope for, you know, some kind of something there. I love hearing this. All right, Sophie, roller skating questions for you now. Why, why was it important to cast an actor who could skate themselves versus using a double? Did you ever consider having a double at all or no? So actually, uh, like Alex said, we shot this movie originally in seven long shots, which means like seven, 15, 20 to 20 minute shots. So we couldn't really use a, a double, which actually I never thought I, uh, about. But I think that it was just important that to find someone who could like, um, incarnate this character. Uh, I don't skate myself, but there's this really cool place in LA called uh, Moonlight, Roller Rink. And Damien, my DP, took me there one day and I was like, just like, I couldn't, I mean, it's this very disco, you know, uh, colorful place where people skate and dance and have like super cool outfit. And I kind of fall in love with this world. And I met the LA Roller Girls and I kind of discovered this world, even though I don't know how to skate. And I still, I still don't know how to skate. But uh, when we were like writing, we thought about why sh what about if Cherry roller skates? Because we were like look looking for something very specific to build this character. And we thought roller skate is really this kind of fun and cool, but also kind of dangerous. You can fall at any time and you have to get back on it. So I think we like this idea of finding a balance with this character who is so free, but sometimes is looking for more stability. Uh, I don't know. So we, yeah, we thought that the world of roller skating was kind of, and what does that mean in terms of like uh, fluidity and, you know, skating through the city? There was something that kind of, I don't know, just click. Uh, and yeah, when we like, we were like um, casting, um, that was one of the questions we asked all the time. And when we saw Alex <laughs> self tape, I was with my, I was with my DP, we, I was with Damien. And actually I always ask all my collaborators, what do you think? And Damien was like, yeah, no, she doesn't know how to roll a skate. <laughs> but I really like her. I was like, okay, what about we give her like, you know, some lesson and we see if she pick up. And actually I, you know, <laughs> Alex was in Atlanta. I was scrolling through her Instagram to understand more who she was. And Alex is like this badass traveler. She, she's been in like so many country backpacking and stuff. I was like, I think she seemed very adventurous. I think, you know, she's on it. She seemed not scared. She seemed that she's breathing life and trying things. And, and I was like, yeah, maybe she can just, you know, 
jump and not, and so this is what happened. You just learn so fast and you are you are on it and you're you know you just you just nail it so fast. So we're like, okay, let's do it. That's very impressive. Wait, so your your DP already knew how to skate. So did he oh, ever yeah. try to film a movie while skating or was this a first for him? I think it was the first time for him. Like, that's why I think he wanted to kind of jump on that. Because I was like, okay, Damien, so I really want make, to make this project. It's going to be like seven one shot. And there's some part of the movie that you're going to have to film on skate. I was like, oh, yeah. I think that idea was very exciting for him. And yeah. he is a very good roller skater. He, 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 he skated like for since he's like 10. So, yeah, I think he liked, he liked this challenge. And I think everybody on set was excited about this that being their first feature film for most of most of the crew and having this kind of very challenge um, aspect of, you know, making, a, you know. I have a, a bunch of questions about those one shots, but Alex, a, a somewhat silly question for you because the roller skating is making me think of this. What is the most random skill you have in your special skills section on your acting resume? Oh, that's a great question. I haven't like revisited my skills in so long. Probably like bowling. Like I, I honestly, it's one of those where I'm like, I don't actually know how, but I know, the, I know the idea of it. I'm sure there's like a level of skill to it, but maybe that, I don't know. I always love hearing about the out of left field things that people put on. Cause like, you never know. I mean, it's like, never know. I literally today got a tape that was like, we need an open water certified actress. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. (laughs) You learn, so you get to learn so many uh, different skills through, through acting. It's one of my favorite parts about it. So many different skills and so many different experiences in life. Back to the, the whole, uh, the seven, one take thing now. So Sophie, first, why did you think that that was the best way to film the movie for the story itself? But then also, why was that best for the production you had set up, your resources, et cetera? Mm-hmm. Um, so actually, Cherry Story is very kind of slice of life. So very everything takes place in like Bali today. So I wanted something very focused. And I think shooting in one shot really increased the pressure and the tension and and yeah, I think he will help to kind of feel this kind of countdown that she had to make this very important decision. Uh, and I think that when you don't cut, the, when you don't you don't stop the camera, you are very you are more connected to the reality because everything that Sherry go through, we are with her at this moment. There is no you cannot lie with one shot sequence. So I think he will like convey this kind of we are with, we are, we have we are with her the entire time. We don't leave her. She's always in the frame all the time and everything. Yeah, she barely leaves the frame, I think, never. So yeah, I like that. And also in terms of production aspect, I mean, we didn't have a big budget. So the idea of to shoot like that kind of save a lot of time. I mean, it's not really the reason, but we shot this movie in 13 days. We had one day of rehearsal and then the following day we were like shooting. So I don't think actually we could have made this movie if we had cut and have like long list of shots and light every shot because we I mean shooting in one shot forced you to think oh how, how are we gonna light the scene how are we gonna work and it forced you also to work with a small crew and I love to work with a like, like you know like a small crew because you're more free I mean depend on the story you tell of course but I think for that type of story that is very you know human it's a, it's a very minimal story I mean there's not like a lot of things happening but I think it was the best way to be as close as possible to what she is living and who she is. How specifically did you plan out all that shots before you started rolling? Is it a situation where like you have certain cues that your DP absolutely needed to hit? Yes. Yeah, actually we shot, uh, we did some, uh, what they call a uh, visual storyboard where I played Sherry. So there's somewhere in my computer, like video of me doing what you do. I never showed you. I would <laughs> love to I never showed you that. Okay, it's somewhere. Um, so yeah, we did rehearse with me and, and with Alex, of course, for the, on the first day, you're like, we, we kind of cut the, the scene in like little piece and we rehearse every little piece. And at the end of the day, we did maybe two or three run through. But uh, yeah, it was not a lot of time. I mean, I kind of wish we had more time. I think it, we would have used like an extra day for every scene. But you know, it's, you know, I mean, I don't know, Alex, what you 
I feel like sometimes when there's, when there's more pressure like that, that's when the unexpected magic emerges versus if you had all the time in the world, then I don't know, you wouldn't, I, it sounds cheesy, but you wouldn't be like reaching for the stars and taking swings the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you, I feel like it's also important to note though, because, because these were such long takes and it took so long to reset and, you know, review and whatever, we really only had maybe 10 chances to get the shot, like just 10 takes and it had to be just one of those. So there was a lot of pressure, you know, for all, for everyone, like all departments, like if, if the costume was off, if anything was off, I mean, that's an hour and a half burned. I have so many specific questions, Alex. I don't know if you could remember this in particular, but is there a is there a specific mark that you would have to hit within one of those takes that you found most difficult? Where like you would be getting to that spot and just I don't know, it would get in your head if you didn't hit it perfectly. Everything in that op- so in the opening scene, I'm like in the bathroom and I have to like I so like there are no insert shots, right? So if anything has to be in there, it has to be timed. So it was really tricky because I think it was like tough as an artist too, because I couldn't really do all of the things I wanted to in that moment because I had to also kind of puppeteer. So like if I had to like make sure that I picked up the pregnancy test at this exact time to be aware enough of the camera of like, okay, so now we're in frame. So I think that was really tough. It was tough pulling down my pants. It was tough. Like all of the timing in the bathroom, I think was just like so, so hard. And it was our very first day of shooting. And it was just like, it was like, it was the crazy heat wave. It was like 110 degrees and it was just like miserable, but I mean, everyone was a trooper. We got it through, but it definitely took a lot of, a lot of rehearsing just in there to get all of those things perfectly timed. What would you say is a new tool in your acting toolkit, so to speak, that you know you gain from filming a movie this way that you're excited to apply to a future film, whether or not it is shot this exact way? Letting it go, because I think I had a real I had I beat myself up for the first half a lot because, um, you know, if you're if you're shooting 18 pages and something happens on page four and I like, can't, I'm just like, why did I do that? Like, how can I, how, how can I get, you just have to like, let it go and like, keep going. So I think that that was the toughest thing. And it was also kind of hard actually to not anticipate things earlier. So like, if I start a scene and I'm talking to, you know, a couple different characters and then in 10 minutes, I'm going to have this big fight with my boyfriend. It's kind of hard not to like, be thinking in advance, especially if I'm skating or whatever. So it really was the ultimate, just drop in and let everything go. Such a good thing to have in your back pocket now. (laughs) Sophie, for you, how does filming this way impact how you give Alex and the rest of your cast notes? Is Is it the kind of thing where you do one take and then you have to, you know, break down the entire shot you just captured and apply notes to different moments? Yes, yeah, so actually, we had so much little time. Um, it, 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 what you said, Alex, it really, really resonates with me because I think I'm a very uh, perfectionist person and very control freak. And I remember Damien told me, "You, you need to know that it won't be perfect. You need to lo- you, you need to lose control and let it go." So I think it was also for me a learning process of we are we are doing our best. That's what's matter, and things gonna be probably a bit different, but you know it doesn't matter. You have to learn how to make the best of that. Uh, because, you know, with Damien doing the pulling and everything, sometimes it was like blurry and stuff, but I think it created this kind of um, this style. So, yeah, it, it really forced me to learn to, I don't know, to, to lose control. Um, and um, for the notes, yeah, so <laughs> it's it's it was very kind of like, I didn't know how to take note and remember everything I have to say when, you know, the take is 15, 20 minutes. So very quickly, I was like, I need to write. So I have my little notebook and I was writing like that. I have my little combo. And what we did, because it was taking so much time to give note to everybody, we, we put everybody in circle. That was very kind of boot camp. I was like, okay, so Alex, this is your note. And for the costume designer, this is... So we had this collective feedback. And what was cool, actually, it's like everybody was kind of in a circle and could also react. So there was something very collaborative and I like that. And I think when you have such a small crew, you can allow yourself to be more open and listen at what everybody, I mean, at some time, at some, at some point you need to like keep the control of course, but 
again, going back to this sense of freedom that we're making this movie together. So feel free to, if you have something to say, it's now because in two hours we're going to be done. So I like that. I think making a movie, you you need your collaborator. It's not, you're not, you're not doing a movie by yourself. So I like that. It was scary actually to <laughs> give everybody, you know, look, I felt like, like a school teacher, but yeah, it worked. It worked. With, at the, the, with the emphasis you put on collaboration there, Alex, I'll throw this to you. Is there any particular crew member who influenced something you did with Cherry the most because of that collaboration that this shooting process necessitates? I think our DP Damien was, he was like so my homie because honestly, so we, especially before we were like really tight friends, I think at first, I I mean, a lot of times, cause Damien is the first, Damien was in my face the entire time. So I think that he could kind of tell how I felt about a take. And then like, if, if it was like, you know, the second or third take of the day, I would be like, that was terrible, wasn't it? And he would be like, it wasn't your best. And Sophie would come in and be like, but it's okay, you were beautiful, it was great. And, and so then like, <laughs> Damien would be like, mm, this is where you went wrong. And I'd be like, you know what, you're right. Um, so I think not, because I 100% trust Sophie. I mean, she's like the best collaborator, obviously. But I think it was nice to just have someone who like wasn't afraid to hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm just like, you got to quick, it's got to be faster here. Or like, I felt like you dropped out here. So, I mean, just having that quick, like, here's just like from a general what I think, because you're also looking at so many other things where Damien is just looking at me. Yeah. And I think also he's a closest, um, I think the relationship between an actor and a a director is a thing, but actually the relationship with the DP is as important because he's the closest person to you as a, you know, in in the room and um, shooting this long scene, Damien was really always with you from the beginning to the end. Sometimes I was in a different room. Uh, Most of the time I didn't say action, which was very frustrating, but again, so true. It was a process to letting, letting 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 him go, and I trust Damien so much. Damien is a very sensitive person. He's he's really my best friend, and like really, we're able to rely on him. And I know he will, you know, be this very supportive, honest, um, you know, person. So I was I, I felt comfortable that he was kind of taking over this moment where he said action, and he's also he was also saying cut because I wasn't in a room, room either. Like sometimes you're like yeah. down the street. So yeah, I think Damien was definitely like someone. Oh, I'm so glad that we had him. I haven't thought about that in a long time too, because honestly, a lot of times instead of saying action, he would just be like, "Okay, I'm ready." So whenever you're ready, if if he could sense that, like maybe I what maybe I was still flustered or trying to figure out, you know, what I what I was trying to do, um, he would just be very gentle. Just okay, you know, whenever you're ready. And it was just like such a great space to work in, just from start to finish. What a nice, seemingly small thing to do that could make all the difference. Yeah, (laughs) no, it really does. All right. I have to let you both go soon. I will end with this one because I always love talking about overcoming challenges on set. So can you each recall a time on set when things weren't going to plan? You found a creative way to pivot and you found some unexpected magic and a particular scene slash shot in the movie is better off for it. Mm. Sylvia, you can go first. Mm. I think what I learned actually on this project is actor most of the like 99 percent of maybe 100 percent of the time they are right you need to listen to them i remember this scene the first and so our first day of shooting was really difficult you know nobody know each other it was very hot we have wildfire on the hill like just next door it was really agony it was really hard and um and i remember there's a scene that you're like ah oh, i don't i don't feel it and i was like no no but you just have to do that and you're like, mm. and what I learned actually is like, you you were right. I should have listened to you because there was something that didn't work maybe mm-hmm. because there was no reason for the character to do that at that moment. And I think when actors are like kind of not understanding what they do, you need to find a solution or you need to, to, to expand. And if it doesn't work, it's because maybe the scene doesn't need to be here or maybe the dialogue is not the right dialogue. So I think being really open to, you know, what the actor are going through and if something doesn't work as a director, I think it's really important to think, okay, do we really need uh, this scene? We do, can I rewrite this dialogue in a different way? Or maybe you just cut the dialogue and really dive into, and sometimes it's little things, but because you guys are like the one who are like putting yourself in this, in someone else's skin, you know, sometimes better. 
than us kind of you know i think at the end of the shooting i realized that you knew sherry better than me now and i had oh. some hard time actually to talk about that character because i kind of doesn't honor on her anymore i want her but you i can't i kind of give this character to you and then you're gonna you know i don't know i don't know if that makes sense but yeah so maybe this first scene really was a big lesson that if something doesn't work you need to kind of really take a moment and make decision with the actor. It's going to be a lot of uh, actors watching this interview that are going to desperately want to work with you after that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I don't know. I almost, I almost I almost kind of feel not the opposite, but I mean, I agree. I feel like I learned I learned to trust you know what you and Damien were saying, and it, even if I had an idea of like, well, it shouldn't be this. Like that was a really great exercise for me to be like, well, if Sophie says I got to do it, that this is my job. I got to, I have to find a reason for me to do it. Um, so I think that that maybe that's yeah. I guess that is just more of a skill that I've now developed. But um, that first day really was just such a challenge on all on all just everything because there was the skating there was the fire there was I mean it was like everyone's first production in COVID it was just like crazy so I think for both of us yeah I think ultimately just you know trust your people because you hire them for a reason and you're you know I don't know yeah I think to rely on the on the people around I mean I think we are not alone sometimes we feel very alone even like the director you know you're like at the top of the pyramid and you're like oh I'm by myself but no you have all this uh, support system uh, mm -hmm. under you who are like here for you and they're caring for you and they're fighting for you so I think for the actor sometimes you can feel isolated and you're like in the spotlight and so you are in such a vulnerable place right mm -hmm. um, and I think it's okay to say I don't know why I'm saying that you know it's okay to to, of course, you know, to listen and try to please the director and to try to, you know, do your best. But at some time, I think it's okay if something doesn't work to have the courage to say, you know what, I don't understand why, why I'm saying this line. You know, I understand everything, but that line, I don't understand. Um, just, you know, to trust each other. I mean, depend of every director. And I mean, everybody had their own technique. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think about a scene where we really kind of, at the end of the day, we're like, okay. I think that really the big, I feel like the thing that is the biggest change, it's kind of the overall thing for the movie though, because when you decided to cut it, um, mm -hmm. because I mean, the initial, the initial plan was to just have, okay, these are the seven takes. This is it. Here you go. Um, but I mean, I do think that the things that are missing just don't serve the story in this pushes it along. I mean, it's a quick watch. And I think that that's for the best because, you know, collectively there's probably 10 minutes of me putting on shoes or skates, like, and you, you can't get around that. So, I mean, I think that letting your initial idea go was a really huge thing. Cause I mean, we all committed to it, right? Like we're like, okay, this is the goal. This is what we're doing. And that was like, I'm sure that was like heartbreaking for you and it changed the movie so, like for the best yeah yeah I think uh, it took me a while I mean I kind of edit the first version myself and I I realized by myself there was something that wasn't completely work mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I think sometimes you have to let go your best idea and it's okay or at least just try it doesn't cost anything to try and so when we you know start we started cut it the movie we're like yeah I think it just worked better and it's yeah. okay. I was just like, I was so scared. I'm like, I'm going to have to announce everybody that knows the movie is not like long shot. They're going to all hate me. Um, <laughs> you know, but I think everybody was just happy to see that, you know, the movie was successful. And so, yeah, actually it's okay. And, you know, yeah, it was heartbreaking, but at the same time, it was kind of a relief. And you wouldn't have been able to add all of that gorgeous B-roll, like all of the, like, she has like the best parts of LA that I think everyone always sees, like, like, the Hollywood sign and like the walk of fame, just like traditional Beverly Hills. And you showed like the true LA that you love, which I don't think could have, it couldn't have gone in there any other way. Yeah, absolutely. We, we showed all this little B-roll months later. And actually you're right. If I didn't decide to, if we didn't cut the movie, we would have done. I mean, so it's a walk in progress. It's like, you have to let it go to, to receive something else. You know, it's, it's, it's a cycle. So you lose, but you win at the same time something new and different. And and you're right. It 
I mean, the, the movie is so different with all this, you know, little moment where you can breathe and Cherry is skating across this beautiful East LA slash downtown. I mean, this is where I lived since I moved here. And yeah, because initially I was like, oh, I'm going to make a movie yeah, about, you know, this this uh, this story. But also I want it to be a love letter to Los Angeles and how I see the city since I'm a European person. And, and I think, uh, yeah, we, we, we gained that doing the B-roll. You feel that while you're watching the movie. I just also love the emphasis on the importance of collaboration because that's what filmmaking is all about. And that's what so yeah. many of your answers have been tied to. And it seems like you had a really special group working on this film. I could talk about your movie all day long. I'm not allowed to. I have to say goodbye. I'm going to say thank you for your time. And on behalf of the SAG After Foundation, thank you so much for sharing your experiences, your process, and your craft with your fellow performers. Again, congratulations on Cherry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching.